pressure to do when it comes to pocketbook issues. And the Conservatives hammering Justin Trudeau. They say he's out of touch with average Canadians. And after eight years in power, his government is out of ideas. Let's bring in CTV's Rachel Aiello, who's standing by in Ottawa following some of this here. And you heard a lot of interest by the media there trying to get answers from the head of Metro. We know that the head of Loblaws, Sobeys, Costco, Walmart, they're all there as well at this meeting to try and answer some questions. Uh, what do we make of it all, Rachel? Yeah, so what, based on what we've heard there, it doesn't sound like they've come out of this meeting with any concrete plans to what they call stabilize prices. And this is kind of the question that a lot of reporters have been asking since Prime Minister Justin Trudeau made this announcement on Friday that he was summoning these grocery executives to Ottawa for a meeting. The purpose of this meeting, Todd, was to talk with Freeland and Champagne about a plan to get grocery prices under control. The Prime Minister's ultimatum was, if you don't come forward with some sort of credible plan, uh, they would consider tax measures. Now, tax measures is an extremely broad um, phrase. We don't know exactly what that would mean. We are expecting Todd to hear from Minister Champagne just before question period around 2 p.m. So maybe he'll give us some core takeaways. But based on what we're hearing from the CEOs, we had Judy Trin there grilling them as they went in. No commitments on lowering prices from what we've just heard as they start to trickle out. It sounds like they're trying to make the case that the Retail Council of Canada has that uh, inflation is to blame for this. You know, it's not grocery CEOs profit mongering. It is uh, inflation. It is the cost of producers, shippers, kind of all the way down the chain that these prices have uh, increased. So I think your question is right in, in what will actually come of this and whether there is some sort of like carrot and stick here that the Prime Minister can use that is different than what we've seen from parliamentarians uh, this spring who grilled, them, who grilled these CEOs over grocery prices and nothing really resulted from that either. Yeah, and no doubt for some of these CEOs, they understand the public pressure, even if it is a bit of a name and shame exercise. They are there, uh, so at least they can say, look, we're having conversations here but you know, whether or not it actually makes much of a difference in the end we'll, we'll have to see. Parliament is back as well. A lot at stake here for the government bigger picture not just about grocery prices, housing affordability, rising interest rates, the cost of living. Again this sense that the government, the Prime Minister needs to show look I understand. I understand the concerns and the challenges uh, that are facing everyday Canadians right now. Can he actually do that Rachel? Well, that is going to be the test as they head into this sitting. What we heard from House Leader Karina Gold this morning was that there's going to be a large bill brought forward soon, kind of wrapping up everything the Prime Minister promised on Friday. He came out of uh, that meeting with his caucus members committing to a GST measure on housing, to holding this meeting with grocery CEOs, going after the competition board, a number of ways that they're framing their next phase of following through on affordability for Canadians. But, you know, Todd, I was looking back at some of the articles I wrote uh, when the kickoff of the spring sitting happened and then when the House rose for the summer, affordability, affordability, affordability. So this is a continued focus on this issue, likely a signal to the Liberals as well that the measures they've put up in each one of those phases uh, has not solved the issue. So we saw that grocery rebate, we saw a housing benefit. That has not been enough to quell Canadians' concerns about affordability. And so, yes, we are now heading into Parliament with them facing questions from an invigorated Polyev uh, and an even more determined Jagmeet Singh on what the government is going to do to concretely address the cost of living crunch that Canadians are feeling. Meantime, the Conservatives really have the wind in their sails. If you look at all that polling we've seen uh, in the last couple of months, Rachel. Yeah, and I'm really fascinated to watch question period coming up around 2.15. Uh, Karina Gold, the House Leader, spoke to me earlier this summer promising that what you would see from the Liberals was a question period that Canadians watching can be proud of. Uh, but at a time where there is such intense political opposition between the two of them in tension, what is that going to look like? Polyev will be facing off against Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, likely for the only time this week as Trudeau is off to the UN. Uh, and so I'm really curious to hear what is that first question from Polyev? What are the issues that he is focused on and how does the Prime Minister respond? Is it going to be a bit more uh, aggressive uh, an approach or are we going to hear what Karina Gold has kind of billed as some sort of more uh, polite uh, decorum from the Liberal benches? A question period Canadians can be proud of. That's certainly ambitious. We'll see how it plays out. Thank you for this, Rachel.